13th. It's one of the most anticipated matches in AEW history. I'm cashing my chip in full gear. The AEW World Champion, John Moxley. Get in the ring with me. It's dangerous as all hell. The generational talent, MJF. For the first time in my life, I'm gonna earn it. AEW presents Full Gear Live. This is not a game. This is my life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined by Taz and the third member of our broadcast team, Dasha Gonzalez. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from someplace far away, he claims to be over 300 pounds. He's very nice, very evil, Dan Housen. Dan Housen in action to kick us off here tonight on AEW Dark. And yes, what a time it is to be alive because right now at shopaew.com you can pre-order your very own Danhausen, very nice, very evil Jackethausen. Pre-orders event end on Wednesday, or well, on whatever day of November 11th is at 1 p.m. Eastern. Go to shopaew.com. Don't wait till November 11th. Right back down to Dash Gonzalez. His opponent already in the ring, John Cruz. Taz, you pre-order your Danhausen jacket, Jackethausen? Uh, no, no, I like Dan Housen. I have no problem with him, but I uh, I don't wear jackets uh, of anyone. That's the way I love it. And okay. sports coats. Oh, uh, so jackets of anyone. Unless they're a cow. But anyway, uh, what's this called? Jo John Cruz. John oh. Cruz says, he says, you're not going to curse me. Yeah, because that affects our monetization cursing, Taz. It does. <laughs> it's it's fair. Fair. Oh, John Cruz, you asked for it. You gotta be careful. He's very nice. He's very evil, Dan Hazen. He does have that evil side. He's certainly doesn't. John Cruz, I think, feels like he's gotten away with something That's here. That's how he tricks you. Oh, oh. Dan Hazen. Dan Hazen takes Cruz off his feet. Just a reminder AEW Dynamite coming your way live tomorrow night in the Chesapeake Employers Insurance Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. Ted, you have a good Halloween? No. Okay. Uh, tickets. Available right now, AEWTIX.com. Still have a chance to join us in Baltimore tomorrow night for Dynamite. Well, Dan Housen now controlling Cruz. What's he going to do? He's got a front headlock. Maybe going double underhooks or something. Maybe not. Oh, oh. Cruz escapes, lands a thrust kick. Dan Housen crumbles. Dan Housen, I'm sorry, Cruz figures, hey, I thought I got cursed. Look at this. I'm on offense. And now John Cruz just raining down right hands on the head of Dan Housen. I haven't seen John Cruz in a while. Yeah, he's, he's really got. Uh, well, he's going to try to curse the crowd here in Connecticut. Scruffy looking man, huh? Maybe, uh, maybe you can buy him a razor for the holidays. Uh, that looks like my mechanic, Franco. Anyway, but he's tough. Oh, Cruz. Franco. Oh, John Cruz, yeah. And Franco. Yeah. And uh, Danhausen sent hard into the turnbuckles there by John Cruz. Cruz. Nice. Double, uh, double axe hand. Look at that. Yeah, nothing fancy about it, but very effective. And now Cruz dropping the elbow across the back of Danhausen. Kick out there by Danhausen. Wow, look at that. Look at that mask. A day after Halloween. They still got the Danhausen Halloween mask. Bunch of freaks over here, huh? <laughs> a problem with Central Connecticut, too. Never liked it up here. Look at this. I'm like John Cruz. He's he's mocking these people saying, come on, clap for Dan Housen. They're not going to clap. John Cruz is in control. If it's north of 127th Street, it might as well not exist. <laughs> and Cruz Oof. just driving that knee into the lower back. And Cruz is really taking his time, having, having his fun with Dan Housen. Okay. He's locking in that rear chin lock. That uh, John Cruz. Tell you what, it looks like Al Pacino with the beard a little bit. Huh, John Cruz, kind of like Pacino in Dog Day Afternoon. <laughs> That's 1975. I what know, the movie? Right. Jeez. <laughs> the hell's wrong with me? Oof. I've asked myself that every Tuesday. God. Damn it. And Wednesday. <laughs> look at all these people with Dan Housen masks. These people look, they look freaky than Dan Housen. That mask freaks me out. I have well, nightmares about it's that. It's because of the glossy finish on it. Yeah, I hear you. That is. That's it. Go get him, Pacino. Right hand there by. Al Cruz, excuse me, John Cruz. <laughs> Al Cruz. I believe he was a, a politician. That's a different guy. 
He's a <laughs> just, just lay out. But John Cruz now he's, he knows that he don't want Dan Housen to get up. He's going to get cursed. I think he might have. I think Dan Housen the curse might have bounced off Cruz and hit us. Well, that's why our monetization is down. Oh, <laughs> exactly. oh look, look at Dan Housen. Cruz, you're my grandmother. She's the box me years all the time. Cruz tried to shake out the cobwebs, but walked right into that overhead throw by Dan Housen. And Dan Housen. Fired up here. Yeah, he's up to his feet. Coming in with the uppercut in the corner. Dan Housen escapes through the ropes. Knee to the back of the head. Might be doing a springboard here or something. Oh, now he lured John Cruz in. Dan Housen. Vaults over into the German suplex. Cruz got turned inside out. Well, the momentum has swung here for Danhausen. Danhausen up to his feet. The pump kick drops Cruz down flat on his stomach. John Cruz trying to get up. Danhausen assists him with that. Now, Dan Housen drops Cruz center of the ring and scores the win. The winner of this match, Dan Housen. Well, Dan Housen showing his mean side there, the violent side. Well, because he's very side. evil. Yeah, he's very evil. Yes, very evil. And the cr uh, the curse on Cruz effective. And John Cruz eating his Halloween candy through a straw. Throw a straw, he says, Taz. Straw, I say. Dan House on the victory. I believe in heels to grow friendships. I personally have about five or six heel members that have grown to be close friends of mine. I love these women. Trio's Tag Team Action coming up next here on AEW Dark as the Embassy's Brian Cage, Toa Leona, and Bishop Khan are in action against Fuego Del Sol and Waves and Curls. The following contest is a Trios match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first the team of Waves and Curls and Fuego del Sol. Well, Fuego del Sol, Waves and Curls set for Trios competition here tonight on AEW Dark Waves and Curls. The members Trayvon Jordan, the taller of the two, and Jalen Brandon. We've seen them compete here, to, or here on Dark before, but First time for the trios contest for Fuego del Sol. They're in trouble here. Look what they got to deal with. And their opponents accompanied by Prince Nana, the team of Gates of Agony, and the machine, Brian Cage, the Embassy. That's Toa Leona on your left. Brian Cage in the center alongside Prince Nana. And then on the right side of your screen, that is Bishop Khan. All three men members of the embassy in Ring of Honor. And speaking of Ring of Honor, coming up live tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TBS. It's AEW Dynamite from Baltimore, Maryland. And it will be the Ocho, Chris Jericho, the Ring of Honor world champion. He will take on a former Ring of Honor champion. Could be a world champion, pure champion, TV champion, tag team champion. It doesn't matter. Chris Jericho, he is dead set on destruction of anyone and everyone associated with the Ring of Honor brand, Taz. Yes, that should be very interesting for sure tomorrow night. And speaking of destruction, I think the embassy's about to do some destruction right here in front of us on dark. Prince Nana has these three big bad men ready to go. And the bell rings, starting things out for the respective sides are Bishop Khan and Fuego Del Sol. Fuego, who just got dropped to the mat. Khan with a very obvious strength advantage on Fuego. Yeah, but Fuego's tenacious. You know, he's going to keep on moving. He could take a lot of punishment. And I think he's going to receive a lot of punishment here. Man, maybe a counter, though. Oh, Fuego trying to escape out, but Khan just a palm strike to the, to the side of the head of Fuego Del Sol. That could ring your bell quickly. It can, yeah. That definitely could knock you loopy. So open a drop kick, though. Look at Fuego with the drop kick. But notice Khan. I mean, he was just knocked a few feet back. Didn't didn't even leave his feet with the tag made. And now Khan with a trip, but he made the tag out to Toa Leona, who just ran over Trayvon Jordan. Big, powerful, quick athlete, Leona for sure. 
And Trayvon Jordan, not a small man, but Toa Leona just so physically impressive. Oof. And also coming up tomorrow night on Dynamite, Dr. Britt Baker, DND, and Soraya will sit down with our colleague Renee Paquette. It will be the daddy ass birthday bash. Plus, Ray Fenix and Luchasaurus will challenge Orange Cassidy in a three-way match for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. All of that and so much more live tomorrow night on Dynamite. The break dancing didn't help this man. He's gonna probably get smashed here, I think. Oh, Tony Leona just caught Jordan and planted him center of the ring. And now Leona, look at him, just yeah. clubbing shots. Traditional side belly-to-belly -belly suplex, but it's by such a massive, powerful man, there's nothing traditional about it. Now here comes the machine, Brian Cage. And a boot to the midsection. This embassy trio, so dangerous. Prince Nana has assembled uh, quite the team of heavy hitters, but now the tag made to Jalen oh boy. Brandon, who went in for the double sledge, avoids the lariat attempt by Brian Cage. And Brandon trying to DDT Cage. Oh, Cage, maybe looking for that drill claw, but Brandon lands on his feet, hits the NZ Gary, a thrust kick. He's pissing off Cage, I'm telling you, I know him well. And, whoa, what a back body drop by the machine. That's what happens when you're the machine, Brian Cage. That's why that man was the FTW champion back in the day. Second longest reign of all time for FTW champions was Brian Cage. Oh, Brandon lands on his feet. Fuego Del Sol tags in, drop kick, takes down Bishop Khan. Uh-oh. Fuego trying to use his quickness. Good quickness again. Kicks galore here by Fuego. And uh, look at that kick across the jaw. Brian Cage. Whoa! Fuego splits out the gates of agony there. He hit Khan pretty hard, and now he just catches uh, Brian Cage with that kick. He's springboarding here. Fuego, oh, Fuego lost his balance for a moment. Party's over. On the top rope. And Oh wait, I thought that was gonna be it for Fuego, but instead, the thrust kick. Fuego looking for the Tornado DDT. Oh, tag made. It was a blind tag. Not sure Cage realizes it. Fuego lands on his feet, Jalen. Brandon, oh no, this is looking bleak. The power of Cage. Cage drops Jalen Brandon. Now Trayvon Jordan, oh, the misdirect. And Bishop Khan coming in with a back elbow. The embassy is uh, listening to the commands on the outside of Prince Nana. Yeah, the embassy working like a well-oiled machine. Assisted Liger Bomb and the embassy score the win. Winners of this match, the embassy. Well, a win here tonight by the embassy. Very, very impressive by Bishop Khan, Toa Leona, and Brian Cage. Oh no, MJF. Tomorrow on TBS. Here we go. Renee Paquette sits down with Soraya and Britt Baker. Darby Allen looks for payback on Jay Lethal. You ain't seen nothing yet, Darby. Which former Ring of Honor champion will challenge Chris Jericho for the title? And it's not gonna be a pretty sight. Plus, it's a three-way for the All-Atlantic Championship. Orange Cassidy defends against Ray Phoenix and Luchasaurus. Oh, wait a... Oh. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS. The native beast Nyla Rhodes defends her stolen TBS championship next here on AEW Dark. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by Vicky Guerrero and Marina Shafir from Washington, D.C., the native beast, Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Now 
normally I would not be out here having a non-titled match, but seeing as how we're at the lovely Mohegan Sun, I'm feeling a bit lucky. So the following contest is an open challenge for my TBS championship. Her opponent from Fairville, California, Leva Bates. Well, we have to point out it's that TBS title is not Nyla's Excalibur. No, it is a pilfered TBS championship that Nyla Rose stole from the rightful champion, Jade Cargill. And so you can see the referee is reluctantly holding up the title because Nyla is forcing him to do it. Now, Taz, if, if you're Jade Cargill, maybe you send one of the baddies, maybe you come down yourself while Nyla's in the ring, you steal that title back. Yeah, well, we'll see you know, what Jade has in mind, but you know, the whole thing is turning wild, man, between Nyla and, and, and Jade is livid about the championship being stolen from her. Well, I mean, you know, thus far, no one's been able to beat Jade Cargill. She is still undefeated in her professional wrestling career. And so I think Nyla Rose, her strategy is to to really take take Jade out of it psychologically, make her make her upset, make her worried about that TBS championship, and maybe that'll be the crack in the armor for Nyla or for Jade Cargill. That's yes, well, Leva Bates is trying to quiet down Vicky Guerrero. Good luck. What a battle we're witnessing here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was funny. Spear to the midsection by Nyla Rose, and Nyla. Oh, uh oh, God. Beast bomb. One, two, three. Winner of this match, Nyla Rose. Well, that's a direct message sent to Jay Cargo, the real TBS champion. And I am sure we will be as Marina. She has that title in hand for Nyla. We will be hearing from Jay Cargo as Nyla with this victory celebration. If not, tomorrow night we will hear from Jade undoubtedly. Oh, geez, come on. That was a, <laughs> just mocking uh, Jade Cogill there. Where do, where do all these other matches come from, Taz? You can't just inflate win streaks like that. That's BS. Baloney, I says. <laughs> The jaw-dropping Dante Martin in singles competition next here on AEW Dark. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 205 pounds. Dante Martin! Dante Martin set to compete here tonight on AEW Dark. And we know that the full gear AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament is kicking off shortly. Dante Martin, the first man to be named as an entrant for that tournament. Very high stakes. His opponent already in the ring. Encore! And as far as that tournament, you have to look at a Dante Martin as a favorite in it. I'm telling you right now, flat out, just from his ability and his unorthodox offense and crazy athleticism. Yeah, I mean, it's month by month, if not day by day, Dante Martin grows more comfortable, more confident as a competitor. And really, I mean, it's a cliche, but it's, it's a matter of if, not when. Dante yeah, no, becomes a champion. I, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. There's no doubt about that. I, I'm a little different on like some of the younger athletes. Look at that like, craziness, man. Just amazing athlete Dante is. But I'm a little different on that. I, I feel like from once Darius and Dante top flight came to AEW, because I remember we were in Jacksonville, I believe. Yep. And uh, they looked pretty comfortable to me right out of the box. But I, I, that's kind of narrative a lot on younger wrestlers in this day and age. And everybody's entitled to their opinion. You know, I understand that. But of course, the more you wrestle, the more comfortable you get. I get your drift, you know? Yeah, and I mean, especially it's uh, wrestling on a big stage like this here at the Mohegan Sun Arena. There's nothing nothing quite like that. And I mean, right, you right. know, oftentimes we've seen butterflies get the better of some young competitors. Yeah, but someone like a Dante, you know, and oh, like great leapfrog. And, oh, my good Lord. <laughs> He's amazing. 
Doubles over Encore with that kick to the midsection. But yeah, it's, well, you can't replicate the wrestling under the bright lights. Correct. And I, I have to say, we got caught right here. Look at this. Encore. Good counter here. Stalling with that back suplex. But Backdrop. All of our young stars here in AEW, all male or female, they're, they are, Cover. hold on here. They are used to being in the big arenas, right. under the big bright lights, with major worldwide TV. This is how they're, this is how they're growing in our eyes, which is amazing. But that's, there's no stage fright for no, all young guys and girls. And you know that, I mean? That's what I meant by him becoming more comfortable. Uh, don't get hot, okay? Yeah, yeah, settle, relax, you're getting a little tense now. Calm down, okay? Hey, Have we're in Baltimore tomorrow night. <laughs> that's right, that's right, we are. Crab country. Dante elevates over, ducks underneath the wild swing by Encore. And Dante, look at that, just coming in on the blind side with those elbow strikes. Yeah, good reversal there. Got to keep your eye on Dante. There. He's quick. See? Dante slides through the top and middle rope. Now, look at that. Lindsey Geary cracks Encore. Dante perched up on the top. Big diving crossbody. One, two, no. Dante got a little cocky on that cover. He thought he was going to get the win, but he seems like he's geeing up. He's getting fired up right now for whatever the heck he's got in mind. This young guy could do whatever he wants right now. And now Dante. Don't half waste. and half here, baby. Yeah, we've seen him use that half and half into a flatliner, elevated half and half. And uh, Dante, I mean, the thing about him, he's developing so many more ways to end matches, to defeat opponents. And there he is. He elevates on court and plants him. On the cover, two and three. Winner of this match, Dante Martin. Yeah, like you said, that half and half into a flat line, and you called it even before it happened because it kind of set it up. But again, for those that don't know, a half Nelson and a half ways is what in today's wrestling is called a half and half. Dad, I misspoke. It wasn't a flat liner, but nonetheless. Uh, no, I misspoke because you misspoke. I, I know. I'm <laughs> dragging us down, Taz. I'm an anchor. <laughs> but Dante Martin, Victoria. It's an AEW Interim Women's World Championship Eliminator match as Tony Storm goes one on one with Diamante. The following contest, set for one fall, is an AEW Interim Women's Eliminator Championship match. Introducing first from Miami, Florida, the High stakes matchup here tonight on AEW Dark. An eliminator match for the AEW Interim Women's World Championship, Diamante. If she is victorious here tonight, she will get her shot at Tony Storm and the Women's World Championship this Friday night on Rampage. And her opponent. From Gold Coast, Australia, she is the interim AEW Women's World Champion, Tony Storm. And Tony Storm, this is a high stakes matchup for her as well, Taz, because just just because the title's not on the line, still a lot to lose here tonight, having to wrestle twice in one week against a competitor that beat you potentially. Absolutely, and you know we've talked about it before, and it's a fact. Whenever you are a champion of any source in this situation, AEW Women's Interim World Champ, listen, man, you're, the, 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 the spotlight is on you. You don't want to give anyone any kind of advantage. If Diamante right there, as we're looking at her, if she could be victorious here, I mean, that just pole vaults her. Hence the, the concept of eliminator. You know what I mean? Like to, 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 to pole vault someone. You don't want to be that sacrificial lamb as a champion. Colin Elbow tie up into the waist lock by Diamante. Tony Storm reaches back, grabs the side headlock into the takeover. Diamante taking off her feet. Tony Storm bringing Diamante down to the mat. That headlock in tight on the cha uh, potential challenger, I should she, say. Diamante getting both wrists. Wrist control to the hat. Well, I thought she was going hammer lock. She went into an arm ringer. Wrist control is key. You hear me talk about it a lot because it's factual. It's factual, that's Calvar, I say. Oh, I know. And you know, yes, I know, Taz. Well, oh, <laughs> that all blended together. <laughs> we are on the road to full gear, Taz. We are. And it starts tomorrow night, Baltimore, Maryland, the Chesapeake Employers Insurance Arena. Great seats still available. Then coming up this Friday, we return to Atlantic City, New Jersey, at New Jer at the Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. That's this Friday, November 4th, for a live rampage. Then next Wednesday, the Aganis Arena 
in Boston, Massachusetts. That's Wednesday, November 9th. And then the Total Mortgage Arena in Bridgeport, Connecticut on Wednesday, November 16th. Tickets for all AEW events available right now. AEWTIX.com. Join us on the road to full gear. Diamante, I think, tried to land on her feet, but that rotation was so hard she couldn't, and then got caught with a bulldog here. And the lateral press after the bulldog, only garnering a two count for the AEW Interim Women's World Champion, Tony Storm. Tony Storm, very smooth, very tough, very aggressive, you know, female competitor, hence having that AEW Women's World Championship. She can go, man. She certainly can, and we mentioned tomorrow night, Dynamite Live from Baltimore, Maryland. It will be Jay Lethal and Darby Allen one on one. This is growing into a big time rivalry between Darby and Jay Lethal. Plus, we'll have Daddy Ass's birthday bash. Soraya and Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, sit down with our colleague Renee Paquette. Plus, Chris Jericho, the Ring of Honor World Champion, will take on a former Ring of Honor champion. Could be a champion in any division. Jericho said he doesn't care. He is out to destroy Ring of Honor. All of that and so much more live tomorrow night on Dynamite. And look at Diamante hammering down on Tony Storm. This opportunity not lost on Diamante. A shot at that at Women's World Championship on Friday on the line here tonight for Diamante. Yeah, definitely. She's got to have a great outing, and she's doing an excellent job thus far. Diamante is and really showing that mean streak, this young lady out of Miami. Tony Storm taken back down. The kick across the back. And Diamante concentrating her offense on the uh, the upper, the mid back of the champion, Tony Storm. Yeah, she's got uh, Tony Storm hurting here. And the uh, far leg hook, Tony Storm. You saw that that left shoulder of Tony Storm was free, and Tony, great instincts, firing that up off the mat to break the count. Well, uh, Live crowd here, our audience here in Mohegan Sun in Uncasfield, Connecticut, at this big casino here. They're really behind Tony Storm. But Diamante doing a good job of keeping the champion on the mat and driving the knee into the ribs there. And Diamante, very effective offense here on the champion. Yes, she's trying to wear down the champion, and it's working. It really is. Diamante wrenching back on the neck. And we see, or we heard referee Paul Turner tell Di Diamante, keep it clean, keep it off the hair. That's why I shaved my head when I wrestled. I, you know, that's exactly. I was going to say, you know, why did they do that in the military? It's, it's a Roman tradition, so you don't get your hair pulled back and your throat slit. You're a know it all. Oh, <laughs> what a kick to the belly. We took a midsection by Diamante. And now swing and a miss by Tony Storm, but. Oh! Tony Storm, the That's body press, and now raining down right hands, and some frustration showing on the part of the champion. Yeah, her version of a Thez press, and now followed up with that running clothesline. Oh, shotgun drop kick. And Diamante slow to get up after that, but Tony Storm stays on the attack. Fisherman suplex very nearly got the win for the champion. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a snapping low suplex that, that Fisherman would have bridged. Diamante had you know, the ability to kick out, which was impressive. Tony Storm looking for a waist lock here, but Diamante, you can see, trying to fight out of it. The stomp on the foot. Tony Storm maybe telegraphed that lariat attempt. Diamante trying for a Kaza. Dora into a stunner. Uh-oh, uh-oh, upset here. Diamante to no. Tony Storm able to kick out, but Diamante was very nearly headed into a title match this Friday night at Rampage. You're not kidding, that was close. You gotta just follow up if you can, Diamante. Just keep on rolling. Diamante, German suplex. Just snap back with that one. Tony Storm planted a second time. Diamante maintains control of the waist lock. She had a good low grip. Trying to go for a third on that rolling. Oh, switch. Switch around by Tony Storm. Diamante landed high on the shoulders and the back of the head. Tony Storm, a second one. And now, up to their feet. Tony Storm looking for a third, but Diamante recognizes the danger, and Tony Storm released German suplex there. 
Yeah, Tony Storm now. She's trying to build some momentum, and I think she's got it going. Oh. The hip attack in the corner, avoided by Diamante, but Diamante not out of harm's way yet. Tony Storm comes through the second and third rope with the hip attack. Yeah, you're right. Diamante thought she's got out of the way. Uh oh. Oh, the DDT off the apron. And Tony Storm wasting no time, returning her opponent to the ring. Diamante is rattled. And maybe on the verge of getting even more rattled if Tony Storm lands this shot in the corner. She does. Now Storm looking for maybe a Texas Cloverleaf. Yep. Exactly what she's doing. Steps over and Diamante just taps out immediately. Winner of this match by submission, the AEW Interim Women World Champion, Tony Storm. That Texas Clover lead is tough as hell to get out of. So, yeah, once, when you get rattled like Diamante did, and then you suddenly find yourself in a Texas Clover lead, you have no choice but to tap out. Tony Storm, victorious here tonight on Dark. Orange Cassidy and the best friends take on the Trustbusters. Ari Davari and Sonny Kiss and honorary Trustbuster Tony Deppin next. The following contest is a trios match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first the team of Tony Deppin, Sonny Kiss, and trust fund Ari Davari, the Trust Busters. Wow, Tony Depp, an honorary trust buster for one night, perhaps. Well, that's when you have the money Davari has, he just kind of pays people. You know, I need you to step in, maybe he's taking a look at him or something, I don't know. But Davari just, just buys and sells people. Yeah, I imagine if uh, Tony Depp in helps the trust buster score the win tonight, could be right. some future employment for him. Yeah, maybe, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is Mr. Tony Deppin. So Tony, tonight I am making you a honorary trust buster. Now here's the thing, you help me win this match tonight and it's gonna be a very lucrative future for Tony Deppin. for hire. And their opponents, the team of the best friends and the AEW All-Atlantic Champion, freshly squeezed, Orange Cassidy. Well, it's no secret that the Trust Busters have had their issues with Orange Cassidy and the best friends. And so, Tony Deppin being brought in by Ari Davari in an attempt to take out Chuck Taylor, Trent Moretta, and the AEW All-Atlantic Champion, Orange Cassidy. Cassidy, who tomorrow night, live on Dynamite 8, 7 Central on TBS, will put that All-Atlantic Championship on the line in a three-way match against Ray Fenix and Luchasaurus. Friends. And there we see that AEW All-Atlantic Championship. Also coming up tomorrow night on Dynamite, Daddy Ass Birthday Bash. That should be something. Looking forward to that. I mean, that's what they called your birthday party. Right? Well, they didn't even hold a party for me. I don't even know if the company acknowledged it. <laughs> They may not even been a tweet, not it was. They held a party without you, actually. Because <laughs> that wasn't it, they were partying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Darby Allen, Jay Lethal go one on one, plus our colleague Renee Paquette will sit down with Soraya and Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, plus a former Ring of Honor champion will be on hand to challenge the Ocho, the Ring of Honor world champion, Chris Jericho, all of that and so much more live tomorrow night. Dynamite from Baltimore. <laughs> I don't know if Orange Cassidy realized he was out already, but he kept going. Waist lock into the flying mare there by Orange Cassidy, and now into the crucifix. Davari pinned, but able to kick out. 
Cassidy brings the proceedings to a halt. Davari tried the boot to the midsection. Orange Cassidy caught it. And now oh, tag made by Tony Depp. And oh, oh, he tried to get one over on Orange Cassidy. But oh, look, Ari Davari just gouging the eyes. And now the reverse DDT. And that was a good job by Davari. Now he was legally tagged in. So here comes Deppin. Deppin the cover, but barely a one count for him. Yeah, Tony Deppin just just mocking Orange Cassidy. I don't know there. if he wants to play games with Orange Cassidy. He's very. You got to be. See, this is what happens. You can't get all cutesy because now you got to deal with Trent. Deppin went for that uh, that PK on Orange Cassidy, but Trent comes in, takes Deppin off his feet. Deppin went for the trip. Trent avoids it. Barretta puts on the brakes. Deppin vaults off the back of Trent Barretta, and now Deppin the leapfrog, but into the waiting arms of Barretta into the gut buster. Trent, just the heel of his boot driven in the side ahead of Tony Deppin. Now here comes Chucky T, Chuck Taylor. Best friends are just tagging in and out, quick tags to each other, and uh-oh, Deppin, he's gonna have a hard landing here, buddy. Delayed vertical suplex by the best friends, and Deppin, hard landing indeed. Orange Cassidy now the legal man. Cassidy up to the top <laughs> into <laughs> an unorthodox splash. I think it was a, a failed attempt or some kind of an elbow. Maybe not failed, but just like a very funky elbow. Uh, you know how orange is, not much effort put into things. And Sonny Kiss came in, but gets defenestrated by Trent Barretta. Trent sent to the outside by Tony Deppin, and now look at the reversals, and Deppin sent to the outside. And Orange Cassidy with the support. This crowd from the Mohegan Sun. And oh, look at that. Ari Tavari sweeps out the leg. And Orange Cassidy, man, sent into the ring post. He can't afford to take too much punishment here tonight. Head into that All Atlantic Championship three way tomorrow night. But a cover. Well, Tavari was smart what he did there. And pulling Orange Cassidy out of the ring now tells Depp and I want in this match. Let's go. Big right hand to the midsection by Ari Davari and a stomp. That one north of the equator, but still the heel of boot driven into your into your stomach. I mean, that could knock the wind out of you. Oh, oh, that certainly could. Sure can. Still can't believe the amount of money that Davari tried to pay Hook for the FTW belt. $50,000. And, and he ripped it up. Tore it up. She would have talked to me first. And Sonny Kiss. Shot across the jaw, and Sonny really laid it all out with that one. Now the lateral press hook of the leg. Orange Cassie able to kick out. Orange Cassie's resilient, so it's smart, but Sonny yep. keeping a hold of Orange Cassie. Yeah, Sonny getting that corner there. A white stun dog millionaire. Great counter by Orange Cassidy. Tony Deppin makes the tag, but Orange Cassidy tags in Chuck Taylor. Taylor comes in, takes Deppin off his feet. Davari set down to the floor. Chuck Taylor. The belly to belly throw. And Chuck Taylor, Larry in the corner. Trent Beretta, the half and half. Soul food combination by the best friends. And Taz, you know what they say. And by they, I mean me. Tony <laughs> Schiavone, you can go to hell. Oh, no, that's not <laughs> high. Oh. stole your thing last week. I know. Oh, oh low blow. Davari Yambag Yahtzee, folks. Low blow behind the referee's back. They're spinning right now. <laughs> Trent Beretta in trouble. Sonny Kiss, 450 splash. Tony Depp and the legal man. Two. No, Orange Cassie there to break it up. While the Trust Busters, with the addition of the Honorary Buster, Tony Deppin doing great here tonight against this trio of Orange Cassidy and the best friends, but double work on Rana. And now Orange DDT on Sonny Kiss. Deppin running knee strike. I think he caught Orange Cassidy on the blind side. Yeah, I think you're right. Now Tony Deppin. Voice up Orange Cassidy. Cassidy kicks the legs, escape. Rising knee strike by Chuck Taylor. Big time running knee. 
by Trent Barretta. Best friends maybe looking for the double choke slam powerbomb combo. Tony Deppen gets hoisted up, and there's the powerbomb. Barretta covers two and three. Winners of this match, the best friends and the AEW All-Atlantic Champion, Orange Cassidy. A big win for Orange Cassidy and the best friends, but most importantly for Orange Cassidy, coming out of this match relatively unscathed, headed into that AEW All-Atlantic Championship three-way match. Oh, look at this, Navari. He's had it with, with Deppen. Trust us, he didn't even work for you guys. Oh, hard punch! Wow. Fire the dude. That and, didn't work for him. Then he got knocked out. And Taz, Tony Schiavone, you can go straight to hell. <laughs> you gotta give people new one. Yeah. Always dangerous, Kip Sabian goes one on one with Dean Alexander next here on AEW Dark. is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Gorleston, Norfolk, England, weighing in at 193 pounds, Kip Sabian. Kip Sabian with the box in hand. Just something about that box is just, is just completely fractured the personality of Kip Sabian. Maybe maybe a chicken and the egg thing. Maybe the personality was fractured before the box. Yeah, maybe you're right. His opponent already in the ring, Dean Alexander. Hey, what? That right there, Dean Alexander, is a big, intense, strong guy. We've seen, you know, Dean Alexander before here, so you got to be careful if you're uh, Kip. And AEW will be turning to Newark, New Jersey at the Prudential Center first on Friday, November 18th for Rampage Live, and then Saturday, November 19th for Full Gear on Pay Per View. Combo tickets available right now, AEWTIX.com. And then Thanksgiving Eve, we return to the Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, Illinois. That is Wednesday, November 23rd. And for the first time ever, AEW will make our debut in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Washington, the Climate Pledge Arena. We kick off the new year on Wednesday, January 4th. Tickets for all events available right now, AEWTIX.com. Well, Alexander got nailed right there, Kip. Excellent job, and now looks like he's gonna go to work here on Alexander. A chop in the corner, Dean Alexander. Getting sent across the ring. No, reversal there by Alexander. Kip elevates up and over the top of the common gear. He cracked Alexander. And Kip sweeps out the legs. As Alexander down in the corner. Big cannonball by Kip Sabian. Got to be careful that Alexander don't take his head off right about now. He's taking too long. Yeah. Oh, he tried the right idea, but it didn't work. Yeah, Kip heard the footsteps, but Alexander caught him flush with that right hand, but Kip came back with another Gamangiri. Alexander, ooh, got yeah. caught with an elbow there. He tried to stop Kip in his tracks, but that high boot may have. And Dean Alexander follows up with a lariat. Kip Sabian. Strong man. That's a big strong man there. It certainly is. He lands the neckbreaker. One, two. Whoa. Dean Alexander very nearly caught an upset there. Told you, I know Dean Alexander. I've seen this guy train. I know what he can do. We've seen him here before. I know a lot of people, Excalibur. A lot of people. Get me upset here. <laughs> there it is. Oh, Dean Alexander. Hoisted up, Kip Sabian. Sabian escaped out of it. Dean Alexander had his legs tripped out from underneath him. And now, oh man, Sabian Ooh. rocked him with that one. That'll definitely leave a mark. That was a good shot by Kip. And Kip, the legs of Alexander on the ropes, the brain buster, and the win. Winner of this match, Kip Sabian. Well, Kip Sabian. 
I think once he stopped messing around, once he stopped appealing to the crowd here at the Mohegan Sun Arena, once he kicked it into high gear, he put away Dean Alexander, Kip Sabian, coming away with the win. The problem, Marina Shafir ahead of her TBS Championship match tomorrow night is in action next here on Dark. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by the native beast, Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero. From Moldova, the problem, Marina Shafir. Yeah, we see behind Marina, we see the TBS title as we talked about around Nyla Rose, and it's not her title, Excalibur. No, it certainly is not. Jade Cargill, you know, somewhere seething over the fact that Nyla has stolen that TBS championship belt, but maybe that's what Nyla needs to get into the head of the thus far unstoppable Jade Cargill. Yeah, it could be. That definitely could work. Might be working. Her opponent already in the ring, Kennedy Copeland. Kennedy Copeland making her AEW debut here tonight, but she's gonna have her work cut out for her against the problem, Marina Shafir. And before this match gets too far underway, I want to remind fans that Ring of Honor's final battle pay-per-view comes to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex on Saturday, December 10th, the College Park Center at the University of Texas Arlington. Tickets available this Friday at AEWTIX.com and UTATickets.com. And then AEW's New Year's Smash returns to the Denver area at the First Bank Center in Broomfield, Colorado, Wednesday, December 12th. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even that, have time to get that out. Should that guillotine in tight? I had a feeling because she sat Here's down on it. By submission, Damn. Marina Shafir. You hook that thing in, man, and you start to sit. You got to tap quick. Wow. An emphatic victory for the problem, Marina Shafir. It's main event time here on AEW Dark. Ray Fenix goes one on one with AR Fox next. The following contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, accompanied by Alex Abrahantes. From Mexico City, Mexico, weighing in at 202 pounds, he is a one-third of the AEW Trios Champions, Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix, the huge opportunity tomorrow night to become the second man in history to hold two AEW championships simultaneously. His opponent already in the ring, A.R. Fox. But Taz, tonight our AEW Dark main event, Phoenix cannot afford to look past A.R. Fox. No, veteran, um, you know, we've seen him here before on Dark, and I believe Elevation too, and yeah, definitely knows what he's doing. He's trained a lot of uh, talented pro wrestlers for sure. Nice standing switch there by Ray Phoenix. And the elbows by A.R. Fox. Phoenix, of course, as I mentioned, tomorrow night has a chance to be crowned AEW All-Atlantic Champion, but he will be facing Luchas, oh wait, cover here. Luchasaurus and freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy, the champion in a three-way match tomorrow night at Dynamite Live from Baltimore, plus Darby Allen and Jay Leaf will go one-on-one. -on -one. It's the daddy ass, birthday bash. Our colleague Renee Paquette will sit down with Soraya and Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Plus the Ocho, Chris Jericho will put his Ring of Honor World Championship on the line against a former ROH champion in the city of Baltimore, a city that is so important to the Ring of Honor brand. All of that and so much more live tomorrow night on Dynamite. AR Fox got caught coming in by Fenix and just got dropped on the apron. Yeah, he really just jacked the whole spine, jaw, neck, and everything of AR Fox. Phoenix might be trying to zone him for the win here, possibly, because he's got that man hurting right about now. Oh, he's gonna, I think he's gonna open him up for some choppage. 
big overhand shot. Just stunning A.R. Fox in the corner. And now Fox in the opposite corner. Oh, another overhand shot. Yeah, that's echoing throughout this arena here in Mohegan Sun up here in Connecticut. I don't know if Phoenix might want, might want to do another one. It might be taking a little too long, though. Again, Fox is a veteran. He certainly is, and I mean, very, very explosive. And very comfortable on the ropes, quite like Ray Fenix. A shoulder in the midsection stop Fox in his tracks. Well, that's a good point you just said. I think we're going to see it here. You talked about the ropes, Excalibur of Air, Air Fox. He, he's well versed. He can fly too, buddy. Now, Fox just flies over the top, as you said, and Ray Fenix did not see that one coming. My man was in the air, felt like forever. That was cool, man. Good job by Air Fox. And now, returning Phoenix into the ring. Phoenix went face first into that top turnbuckle pad, got his legs tripped out by Air Fox. Now, nice. Fox. That was cool. Into the twisting brain buster. Fox, the far leg hooked. And Ray Phoenix able to kick out. You can see that chest is all. Read it up from those chops, but it's not stopping AR Fox. Phoenix is in a little bit of trouble here. He certainly is. This is not what Phoenix wants. Headed into that All Atlantic Championship three way match tomorrow night. And Dynamite from Baltimore absolutely loaded tomorrow as now Phoenix comes through again. That time lands the big leg drop. Two and whoa. So close, so close. Again, you know, if you, you want momentum going into tomorrow night. You know, for the old title, but it's AR Fox, man. He's not exactly like a tune up match, you know what I mean? No, this is uh, really pushing Ray Fenix as Fox landing some back elbows there. And Fenix still up on the ropes. AR Fox returns inside to the ring and oh, nah. boot into the jaw. Backs Fox up, but Fox, look at that! The Spanish fly. And now AR Fox in one smooth motion to the top floor. 50 splashes and upset. Gonna get him here. Oh my two. God. No. Fox almost got it. Oh God, that was close. Man, if AR Fox had won this match, we might have to consider making it a four way tomorrow night for the AEW All Atlantic Championship. AR Fox, my man, I know you're a veteran. Don't get lost in a moment. Stay on this guy. You got Phoenix now. Phoenix with the. Big overhand chop, but A.R. Fox, the boot to the side of the jaw. Fenix puts on the brakes, comes through. That back heel kick, and now Fenix. Uh-oh, he's pissed off, Phoenix. Yeah, he is kicking it up another notch. There's the chop, and now Ray Fenix. He brings Fox towards center. Black fire driver, one, two, three. Winner of this match, Ray Finney. A hell of a match there. Hell of a match and great finishing technique by Fenix. You notice how he scissored the leg, brought all of his opponents weight over, over top of him, leaving no question about the finish, yeah. no question about the result. Showing some respect towards his opponent, it's Ray Phoenix. That's AR Fox and Phoenix, and he's telling him, hey man, what a battle. And he's getting an endorsement right there, and that's a lot of respect. Yeah, great battle, great victory tonight by Ray Fenix. Thank you for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark. We will see you tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central, live on TBS for AEW Dynamite from Baltimore. Oh, no. MJF. Tomorrow on TBS. Here we go. Renee Paquette sits down with Saray and Rip Baker. Oh, no. Darby Allen looks for payback on Jay Lethal. You ain't seen nothing yet, Darby. Which former Ring of Honor champion will challenge Chris Jericho for the title? And it's not going to be a pretty sight. Plus, it's a three-way for the All-Atlantic Championship. Orange Cassidy defends against Ray Phoenix and Luchasaurus. Oh, wait a... Oh. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TBS.